What's up, everybody? Uh, what's that do? Oh, we gotta click the button. Click the button! There we go. Now we gotta turn that down, too. Woo! Game volume's a little weird. <clears throat> what's up, everybody? I'm Scruff Dog, and we're not broken yet! Um, oh, and Queen Liz, uh, we will be having mini thermo woofles. Uh, see what we can do here. So welcome. Um, if you're new here and you don't know, I've been a forklift tech for 16 years, so I'm probably going to be a little more critical on this than most people. Uh, game spec or rig specs are in the description. i9 11900K, 64 gigs of RAM, RTX uh, 3070 overclocked. And let's see, welcome. So we had the early crew in here as usual. Joe Russ, which is, they're sorting out the membership thing, it looks like. You've, you've been noticed, you've been noticed. Phil in the kitchen, Franco Walker. Joe Russ, Phil in the kitchen, Franco Walker. Joe Russ, Phil in the kitchen, Frank, and Gas Masher. Liz Edzard was here earlier. What's up, Jack? Attack. Nay Smith. Yes, a fork lift. And oddly enough, in my career, I have yet to actually take a picture of a fork sitting on a the fork of a fork lift. <clears throat> but, you know, we'll, we'll get that sorted out one of these days. Ah, oh, Rob's in here. Christian Harold, what's going on? Welcome. Lock Watcher is, in fact, here. There's Chippy Chippy. What's up? Yes, YouTube auto suggests the extra F. Uh, I actually have it in YouTube to say that's me, you know, kind of thing. So it helps get you here. Greg Matthews just up their laptop to 16 gigs today. It's at the max it can take that. Well, there you go. 16 is better than eight. All right, uh, let's see. We'll go over stuff real quick. If you're new here, I'll use your bullshit for a couple minutes and then we move on to the game. So, uh, updates. Uh, wah, 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 wah. Uh, November 24th, my up to 12 hour live stream, because after 12 hours, YouTube doesn't record it. Uh, we're down to Half Life 2 or Alien Isolation. I kind of feel like I know where that's going to go. Um, so, we'll deal with like, uh, actually, let's. Uh, We'll give it a couple minutes right before we start the game. I'll do a little uh, poll thing as I'm slowly narrowing it down through multiple results. Uh, on December 10th, I will be doing a Doom spree. Uh, starting with Doom 1, then Doom 2, then Doom 3, then 2016, and then Eternal. Because uh, it's the 30th anniversary of Doom. Which side of the forklift do we ride? Well, I'm, well depending on the forklift, you're usually shifted just towards the driver's side and most of them don't have a passenger seat uh, in that case we usually just duct tape you to the top or just stick a fork through you and carry you around <clears throat> whatever is more convenient um let's see and yeah okay yeah, i got work sorted out i'm actually working on thanksgiving day which kind of sucks but it's double time pay so whatever We'll work that out. That'll make picking up fun accessories a little easier. Oh, and I actually got to work the Friday for four hours before I do the 12 hour live stream. So we'll see how that goes as well. All right, let's do a toast. Almost forgot that. Nope, did forget this. Got my root beer for the week. We'll have a root beer toast. And then we'll do a thermal woofle, and then we'll see about seeing what's up with this game. So, uh, cheers to uh, material handling stuff. That's like forklift world warehouses. <laughs> cheers to all the people that got to deal with me, because I'm the fucking mechanic that the operators got to deal with when they fuck shit up. So, cheers to operators. 
you know, I'll even I'll even give a half a toast to the union because some of the union operators are actually really good. <clears throat> some of them. And then some of them are just there to waste oxygen. All right. Space forklifts. Uh, I don't see one. I, I feel like there's been at least one game that has space forklifts. Uh, let's do uh, some thermo woofles. Let's see where the camera's actually aimed. Yeah, that's good enough. You can see Freddy. You can see the other camera. All right, let's uh, fling that over. We'll do a couple thermal woofles. We'll come back here, and then uh, we'll start moving on. If you don't know what a woofler is, this... Let me turn that. This is a woofler. This is a can of butane. This is a 3D printed thing. <clears throat> you put soapy water in it, and you add a lighter. And then you get to do cool stuff like this. These will be a slightly smaller than usual, so I don't burn down the green screen. Oh, but still not bad. And go. And we'll do one more just because we can. I'm gonna hold this a little higher up. How's the music level? Because the game uh, music files were apparently programmed in uh, TV commercial fucking codecs. Like, just so that you know, right now the music is at 10% and it's turned down 10 decibels in OBS. Like, that's how loud the fucking music is uh, in this game. Like, that's cool. I understand you're proud of your, your, your buddy's music, but yeah. All right. Um, well, we're going to do Forklift Simulator 2023, and I feel that if we're going to be as fair as possible, we should also do Forklift Operator Simulator uh, 2023 with me. So the best way to emulate an operator... Let's get into the operator mode here, because that's how half of them I know fucking operate. What's up, Virgo? Chipmunk, honestly, I am not good with background music on live streams. That's why I hate Twitch. Well, we'll see. Uh, yes, we could turn it off. I don't know if the music plays in the game itself or not. Let's find out. I mean, I could just turn it off, too. I mean, it's not like... <laughs> There's music. 10%. Boom. All right. We can do that if that bugs people. I'm fine with that. <clears throat> if anything, well, I mean, at this point, enough of it is played. I'll, I could get a copyright if they really want it to be game dev boneheads, but they probably won't. All right, let's see here. I guess, hey, that not, no shit. That looks like an Amazon warehouse. Oh, hold on. Let me go scruff small here, or game small, as I call it. It's like magic and shit. So, uh, so that uh, is painted an awful lot like an Amazon warehouse, if you've ever seen one. Just the blue is just a little bit different, but they always got the stripes on them. So, how many days? What the fuck? All right. Hmm. All right. Well, joint is half smoked so we're about ready to act like an operator hey there newcomer oh, hold on hey there newcomer ready for your first mission unload the trailer and carefully position the pallets where they belong show us what you got 250 dollar paycheck 
bonus for performance and accuracy without any collision <laughs> uh, within five minutes. Uh, I guess we'll see how that goes. Oh, oh. Hold on. Got a stray ash. I could just be an operator and just leave it in the operating area, but that's my keyboard. Alright, let's, uh... That's mouse. That's... I wish I was that flexible. Okay. Uh, got controls. We got a big red button. Let's see. Alright, so throttle is sticky. Uh, steering works. Ooh, the handles move. Ooh, okay, so we have a two stage uh, with three lift. Free lift means that you can lift the ports before that center channel starts going up. That way you can pull into a trailer and not poke it through the top. You have free lift and uh, what they call limited free lift, which is basically barely enough to get the pallet off the ground. So lift and lower work. Um, let's see. Where, how do you do the other shit? Oh, let's see. Controls. 250 bucks per collision, says Chippy. That is entirely possible. Or if you're at Amazon, most of their collisions cost about $2,000. Change gears. Okay. Show control with C. Okay, that's a good one to remember. Angle forward, angle backward. Okay. Move forks, forks up, down, camera view. Alright, what? Oh. Okay, so this is, uh... Is that a young Heinrich? That kind of looks like it's based on a young Heinrich. Kind of? I'm kind of going off with the gray thing there. The, the gray, the gray thins. Yeah, so that's, you get two views, alright. Uh, let's see, Q and E. That's wrong. So the keys are backwards is from relative of where they should be, and that should be on the second lever. Uh, it's pretty much universal. First lever is lift, and your second lever is tilt. Like most forklifts, a lot of forklifts only come with those two levers. Your third lever is supposed to be first auxiliary, which is generally side shift. Okay. So keyboard left, right, that's your side shift. Shift, and the keys are correct, but the lever is backwards. That should be the third lever over. And when I shift left, that's shifting right. Shift right should be pull back. Shift left should be push forward. And that's not even like a manufacturer thing. That's just universal. So that's weird. All right. Um, we got nothing to tell us. That's a, that's a righteous angle on the tilt there. Let's see what we got about 15 forward. Got about 5 back, 5 15. Okay. Uh, let's get these things level since there's no obvious way to see the level. And we'll just leave them there. Alright. Um, hold on, let me relight this joint since we're getting ready to drive. Hey, what's up, Weasel Bar? Sam online, it's going in. Alright, let's uh see the joint hanging out of the mouth. So it's a little weird that the, the throttle sticks. Sounds like it has a diesel in it. I don't know that anything this small would have a diesel in it. But Europe has some weird standards, so if this is a young Heinrich and this was 
This is exciting shit, folks, let me tell you. Like, I hope you can all contain your excitement. You can actually bottom the force out too, okay. It's a little weird to control, because obviously I'm used to using a... Uh, actual forklift. Doesn't handle too bad. What you doing today, Scruff? Oh, same fucking thing I do at work. Hell yeah. Well, not really. I wouldn't be picking boxes up and putting them down. I'd be yelling at the guy that just did it and crashed into the ship. Hey, not bad. 350 bucks for four pallets. That's about union rate. Dang. All right, folks, that's our first exciting day of work. Like, must be a government job if uh, you ain't got four pallets on load in a day. Or unless this is just another good morning. This is a great job on your first day. Today's task is to unload the truck. Place the pallets on some higher shelves. Hmm. Captain Hardhat guy. Uh, And uh, the best thing is whenever you see pictures like this, especially in training videos and shit, like everybody's uniform is fucking spotless because it's brand goddamn new. Whereas when you actually go into the site, it's just, you know, I mean, obviously it's just a fucking mess. Higher shows. Alright, let's do this. like a real operator, just push it till it's straight. Always drive the boat. That's where you're going. Kind of can't see. Going full throttle, yeah, that, that's that's pretty much how they do it. Folks. Good beeper. It's not the annoying new ones that are like. Have you heard the the new reverse beepers? <laughs> Straight you want this. Uh, oh, we got barrels too. Uh, I guess that means I probably shouldn't go past. I'm guessing those are meant to fall. Because that's pretty much what always happens in the real world. This is this is hard enough in real life going up this high. Much less. Ooh. Just not. Just doesn't like where it's at. 
Can go over a little bit. Not getting green here, folks. What's going on? Oh, there it is. Drop it. Forks the right height. So that they all will back out. <coughs> I feel like I'm moving to operator's blinds here. This isn't like the only forklift you get to drive. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Brakes aren't too bad. Chains, uh, the, the the wavy things there, right in the middle of the uh, the mast. The mast being the thing in front of me that the forks are attached to. These kind of look like chain, like forklift chains. Change them enough to know. How it is not straight. Pushing it to the Shouldn't drive with your load up like this, but I don't see the ball surrounding so us. Sign to it. No more? No? It's not like that one. Seems like this is a little more picky with the shelves. Like the upper shelves. And where do you want it, buddy? I'm gonna bring it lower. Oh. 508, not bad. Let me finish this joint off here real quick. I haven't gotten any collisions yet. That's like, I'm, I'm, my apologies. I, I'm obviously not that good of an operator. Oh my god, another day of forklift action. Your mission. Oh, 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 hold on. Welcome back. Hope you're ready for another day of forklift action. Your mission today is to unload the truck and directly move the cargo to another truck for seamless transportation. Because switching trailers is too fucking hard. All right. Giggity, giggity. Giggity, whatever. Oh, now my office smells like an Amazon parking lot. I wish you could, could zoom, like, back, like, maybe a foot. Because I don't sit this goddamn close normally. Let's get let's get a couple a couple pallets in here, and then we'll uh, we'll see what happens when we load one at full throttle with no brakes. Because while this is like ultra exciting and all, um, you know, like I don't know if this is automatically advancing us on days in the. Uh, like the menu area because this is all he got then uh, maybe I should have watched the YouTube video first Oop. Oop. there's a ball that didn't count as an action dude. 
They got the customers they got. Yeah. Yeah, we know they probably did it, but we don't hold anybody accountable. However, you... You left the rag on the floor. That's not an accident, I guess. That's not an accident? That's an accident. Alright, there's one. Okay. Two accidents. That doesn't count as an accident. Huh. Let's switch views. I wonder if like there's damage, like a mark. Three accidents. All right, well, let's take a look at the forklift itself here. If I could. All right, so like in the thumbnail, how I said nice touch. If you uh, if you find the brakes, if you look at the. No, I can't have a mouse. Okay, so if you look at the top of the mass, that's the big upright thing there in the center of the screen. If you look, ooh, look at that. See the round thing kind of near the top? Yeah, I wish I could point at it. It's kind of in the slot there, just to the right one, to the, just to the right one, to the left. That's actually, like, legit. That's They, they do slot the masts at the top so that you can access the uh, the mast rollers like that. That's, that's why I circled that in the thumbnail and went, nice touch. Like, that's an actual legit thing. That crossbar is a pretty common design as well. However, there would normally be more crossbars. Let's see if that one moves. Yeah, there would normally be more crossbars, like at the one at the base down there at the bottom. That little blicky that looks like it would probably be about two feet by eh, six inches. <laughs> Aren't those trailers supposed to be tied to the building? Um, not. That's that's not required. Uh, most build, I believe. Well. It might be required now, because every new building I've seen getting built does have the trailer lock arm. <clears throat> um, but you would also normally have a loading dock plate, like an auto plate right there. Because uh, you do not just drive off the concrete and into a truck. Well, you're not supposed to, but people do. Uh, let's see. Ah. That's not nice. That's another nice touch. See how the overhead guard right there, how there's a notch in it? How it doesn't cover, like, the control area? That's so you can drop a chain through there on a, a chain motor above it to pick up the, uh, uh, well, in this case, the engine. Uh, or the battery that's in there. Um, those usually are only on electric trucks, which this looks like it's an electric truck, but it has apparently a diesel engine in it. I guess they needed some sound effects. But, uh... That's a shame that they didn't get the controls right. I mean, they got the functionality right, but it's a shame they didn't get the positioning right. Alright. Uh, brake lights don't work. That's a code violation. Oh, well, not bad, not bad. Um, I'm kind of hoping there's more than just this forklift, but I guess we'll see. I don't know where are we at here. Oh, we gotta get grab that. I do like how you can that you can tip the forklift back. Let's see if you can knock the barrel over. Doesn't really seem like it. I actually got the controls on the garage door. That's nice. There's a lot of nice little touches in here that are cool. It's weird. I've never gone red before. 
is the wrong thing there. Oh, oh, oh. Now everything else is shifted out of position. Great. Great. I gotta go fix that. I didn't think that if I crashed into it, it would, uh... It actually pays attention to make sure you don't move the pallets after you place them, I guess. Sneaky. driver's seat of that truck if you did that. <laughs> Ask me how I know. I didn't know. I've seen it happen. Well, seen the results, let's say. Be easier if the joystick worked, but it does not have joystick support. I suppose I could remap the keys, but um, I might consider that if this were a slightly more exciting game. But I am finding it does seem that most of your simulator games are just monotonous, <clears throat> kind of like just tasky games to just like the ultimate chill. Four collisions. I oh, got paid for four collisions. That must be a union job. Good morning. Oh, sorry. <coughs> Good morning! Oh, by the way, there's some helium out front. Anyway, today's task is to load the truck strategically, optimize space, and weight distribution for safe and efficient transportation. Yeah, that's like some corporate bullshit wording. We got a pal we got something over here, we got a truck there, we got our goal. There's a pallet. And yeah, even when I'm driving a real forklift, that is how I set my forklift. I drop it to the floor and then I go bump bump. There's two bumps on most hydraulics, two quick bumps is usually enough to get the forks about one inch off the floor. That'll clear most pallets. Oop, wrong way. Some, uh, on some specific, maybe more specifically, you usually find it on, uh, like, reach trucks. You can actually get, uh, cameras up there 
and some will actually have lasers attached to the carriage. The carriage being the thing that's holding the forks, like that big rectangle thing that the forks are attached to. You can get like uh, laser lights on them that'll like turn on, you know, at certain heights to help guide you for if you're doing a lot of uh, eye work. I mean, besides getting smoked up, you know, like altitude, high altitude work, you know, that kind of eye work. This pal doesn't have any bottom rungs, so you don't have to worry too much about your plate. You just gotta get in there straight. Not straight enough. Ooh. Of course, you also gotta remember that pallets without bottom rungs can be a little tippier because there is no back support. Fifty, fifty, fifty. How do I? If I got no collisions, I got a fifty-dollar bonus. If I got four collisions, I got the fifty-dollar bonus. So, like, what does it take to not get the fifty-dollar bonus? Do I literally have to pierce my a coworker? I mean, I can do that. If you've ever seen the uh, German forklift safety video. <clears throat> We can pierce some people with some forks. What do we got first here? I can't see where the yellow thing got there. Just a bit outside. Did I get? Oh, alright, got an accident. Right, there's one. Let's go for like a bunch more accidents. Let's get everything loaded up and then we'll just start crashing and good shit. Pardon. Maybe. I was watching this dude got hung up bad on shelves uh, a couple days ago. Or, or was it Friday? Thursday or Friday? 
What's today? Today's one. Oh, Wednesday. No, Monday. That's right now. Um, he went to go load a shelf and uh, he didn't have the pallet up high enough. And the bottom of the pallet caught like the grating, the gritting, like the grate, you know, the big heavy steel screen that the pallet sit on. It caught it, flipped it up, flipped one end of it off the end of the shelf. So now he's got like this big steel grating hanging down from underneath the pallet. He can't pick the pallet up because there's a shelf over top of it, and he can't drop the pallet down because now it's pushing on the steel grate which is pushing on the pallet on the shelf below um so we were just kind of watching him like uh like there's nothing we can do here so we'll just watch eventually he uh kind of just kept working it busting the pallet up until the pallet kind of just fell apart and he was able to get the forks out I don't know there was anything, like, he was a little low coming in, but I think there may have been, like, part of the grid sticking up. A lot of times we'll get some of the, like, tong, not tong, tangs, tangs, yeah, tang. Um, we'll get bent up. Okay, we're good, we're good. So they had to, uh, ended up having to close the aisle for a little while and send in an order picker. Like one of the ones you've seen on, if you've watched the channel, one of the things that you actually ride with it. Uh, they had to send one of them in to clear the mess. But look at that was all just, you know, handled by Amazon themselves. They don't have anything to do with the shelving. Except for telling them when they... They got one section of shelving that it's basically freestanding. Um, like, minimal support. Whoever installed it just, like, did not... Uh, damn it, wrong way. Like, did not pay attention to anything structural, I guess. So they actually had to close a section... Oh, there it is of the shelving down because basically like see how these racking this racking is sitting here it's all wow it's actually pretty much exactly that same type uh, except it's silver and orange but like how this one this will be attached like to the wall this will be attached to the wall the floor is going to be bolted down and all that good stuff which that was, but the problem was, it was in the middle of nothing. Like, there was no walls around it, and, uh, there was such little, there was no, like, aerial support for it. So you could go to the bottom of it and just, like, push on it, and a whole section of shelves would, uh, wiggle and waggle, you know, with 10,000 pounds worth of pallets on it. Wow, the pallets actually have the HT pound market on okay, And that, of course, was right by our shop, so if the thing would have fallen down, it could have come, like, through the shop. That would have been fun. It's like being at Amazon. Heister. This is Heister. Hold on. <laughs> Heister. This is Heister. We got a, uh, we got a OP hung up on a bolted K35. Again. Yep. On the way. People try to cut corners around this newer section of barriers that were put in and they get oh wow they get uh, 
totally hung up on their load wheels. Because a bolt goes up, up in between the, you know, the hard wheels and uh, the lifts get stuck. So you gotta go up there with a jack, jack the uh, front of it up. Well, jack the whatever wheel is stuck. <clears throat> jack it up and then drive it off like I, I'll drive it off the jack I don't you know what the policy is but like I also tell the safety people uh look <laughs> violent in violent out like I'm sorry but that's kind of how that goes so if you are unsure if this is absolutely correct or necessary then I'd advise you to get some cigarette and check back in about five minutes when everything's done Oh shit. stuck. There we go. Uh, what are we doing here? I wonder if it matters if... Yeah, I guess it matters if it's the right way around, doesn't it? Uh, let's, let's tilt forward. forward. Go in the scraper mode. Normally you would just like, you know, get out and fix it, but um, it's a to get out of the forklifts. So we'll see if the, uh, I'm guessing it matters if it's the right way around. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's not stuck on the forks. <laughs> there we go. Let's just try to put it in upside down and see what happens. It's a slightly larger pallet than I uh, thought it was. I wonder if we'll come up with Oh yeah, they're like, no, you can get it <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can flip this before we like, restart. Because we might be able to have some fun with this. Um, Alright. I got a plane. I got a plane. Let's see, are there any other? There is another loose one. Okay, cool, cool. We got this. Since we're apparently duct taping our forklift, we'll just get the gate. I would have thought there'd be like a good challenge in the forklift simulator. Alright. Ugh. Brakes! <laughs> Found the brakes.
that one. It should be loose. The physics doesn't agree. Oh, the physics engine, I should say. It's considering it bugged, so let's just see if we can just drop it flat. Right? Actually, you know what? I'll just scoop it right from the front there. And crash into something. I'm sure everything in there is fine. <laughs> Glass toys for small children. That's fine. Now it's a sound effects box. For small children. <clears throat> oh, that was good. Time, 13 minutes. Nice. Good, good. Do I have the ability to fit a... Carpet handling boom. Oh my god, yeah, a little fucking carpet dick. You get like a 15 foot carpet dick on that thing to start poking people with it. Like, we we will chase each other around the warehouse if we have carpet dicks on forklifts. We also use them to, uh. Wow, there's a lot of shit in here. Um. Like, if we gotta put a welder in the back of a truck, we'll hang it off the front. Can I get out and adjust my forks? Like, the, the side to side? Where are we going with this thing? Welcome back, Fred Matthews. Now, we do, uh, we have, uh, a couple of, a couple of the major carpet, uh, companies around here. Put on the back a little bit. Where is my tail right now? Yes. A lot of forklifts nowadays, if they have a digital screen, they'll actually tell you the angle your, uh, your mask is at for that. So all the forklifts at the Amazon I work with have that now. They use that for like speed control. So like if your forks are tilted real far forward, like here, not there. we're not working for speed run here. So like if you're driving and your forks are tilted forward like that, and like it has a, a sensor on it to know it will reduce your speed because it knows when you stop that pallet's fucking rolling. <clears throat> Whereas you most of them will give you full speed if it has if you have the option check just past tilt back. You know, just past like one degree back and then you'll get full speed if you check the box. But in this game I'm just gonna leave it straight level because I don't think it really matters. Um, but yeah, all the uh the forklifts at the Amazon I work with now have that on the reach trucks. That'd be neat if this thing had some reach trucks in it. I'd be curious to see if this does. Reach trucks are complicated as shit. Wait till I start showing you them on the channel. They're fucking annoying. Like, everything about them sucks. Like, literally, from birth, they suck. Because when they show up on your site, they are pretty much the most dangerous truck to try and uh, unload and set up. Uh, just the way that geniuses decided to ship them, like it is 
it is a problem. Like, they've... <laughs> like, you have seasoned veteran operators that have dropped them trying to unload them or stand them up. And I have to get, a, like, a picture. That's, uh... How these things are fucking shipped. It is just ridiculous. One of these things is, like, you really could come up with a better idea than this. Like, all the other forklifts, you'll ship in pieces. Like, we could just ship this one in pieces, too, people. I guess we can also try one of the other, uh... Chapters, I guess. Okay. See if there's other forklifts. This does not take long to get pretty good at. Crashing into things. Again. Don't give me that red box. Alright. Full paycheck. <clears throat> Alright, operator. We have a trailer waiting to be loaded. It's Let's efficiently load the pallets and ensure they are properly secured for transport. Uh, no, that's not how that works. I, as the forklift operator, am not responsible for securing your load to your truck. That is your absolute fucking responsibility as a uh, truck driver to secure your own fucking load. And obviously, I don't think this game has a mechanic for me going out and chaining down and fucking strapping down the pallets, but still. <laughs> I do think it's funny that there are some fucking drivers, like truck drivers out there, that think that they are going to come in and refuse to secure their own loads, and they expect us to do it. And it's like, um... Are you fucking kidding me? Like, do you really want someone, like, you don't know to ensure your livelihood? I mean, at that point, like, you're literally taking your life into whoever's loading your truck's hand and your livelihood, because if they load it wrong and you have a problem, once you get down the road, Cops don't want to hear that someone else loaded it. Just, you're driving the fucking truck. You, you need to take care of your own business. Sorry. It's a fucking mean rant. It's not even a Saturday night. Christ. Ooh. Kidding me? Alright, cool, cool. Alright, crap, hung up again. Oh, come on. That's what the tapers on the forks are for. Your physics need to be a little more slippery on the pallets. You need to simulate moist pallets. Moist. Moist. 
get that out of the way. Drivers have responsibility for the loads, causes, issues, sometimes with custom customs sealed containers. The sim does not capture the full working environment. Why no people to have to dodge and work around? Yeah, like, seriously. It is a rare warehouse. Okay, now I know where to put my forks to pick up some of these shells. Oh. Yeah, there's nobody around. Everything's all nice and neat, and that's all bullshit. bad game. I'd be, I'd be happier if the controls were right, obviously. Um, the pallets need to be a little slippery, a little more slippery on the physics. Oh, there it is. And I wish my point of view was just a, like, a little more adjustable, like a slightly wider point of view. They had no, oh, they do have a drink holder. Okay, the textures are nice. Some of them do, they don't, they literally don't take their foot off the accelerator pedal. When they go to stop, they will just inch, which is when you hit, you partially hit the brake. Um, and it, uh, opens up a, uh, a valve in the transmission to dump uh, converter pressure or clutch pack pressure so that you can rev the engine and it won't try to drive forward. Which it's meant to drive up to a, you know, a thing. You take your fucking foot off the gas. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Like, you know, you drive up to a thing, you hit continue. Okay, let's go to the menu. See what's in the factory. Um, right, so you pull up to your thing, and if you need additional power on an older forklift, the newer ones do it automatically. You inch it which means you hit the brake it disengages the transmission and then you can rev the engine without like taking it out of gear so it's kind of like a built-in clutch <clears throat> um without having a separate pedal most of the time nowadays you don't have a separate pedal for it anyway but these dudes would just just to sit there and wait like they wouldn't even take their foot off the gas like if they were just waiting for something they would just sit there for like a minute or two at a time with the engine just blaring away and they're just chilling not doing a damn thing. Like, the biggest fucking morons I've ever had to deal with as an operator. It's the same truck. It's got safety stickers. I mean, that's, that's a start. What are we doing with pallets now? I mean, this is literally just a place to look different. Alright, let's, uh, I guess let's... I guess let's at least get to day three to see if anything interesting happens. There we 
loading, I guess they're not loading the radar belts, they're really small. Generally speaking, if the talent gets sideways, if you're pulling diagonally, you can just kind of make it work. Technically, if you have a load, you should drive backwards. Because you have better... Well, in a real forklift, you're not staring at the seat, but you can see past the seat, and the load isn't blocking your view. But, like, nobody ever fucking does that. Unless it's, like, you know, super tall load. First accident in a row. I'm not. What? I can't pick it up. Later. didn't count as an accident though. Oh, Alright, we're getting that 50 bucks. You know we're driving like we're high or something. What? What? Oh, it's, it's, it's having power physics issues. Definitely the correct tone for the damn backup alarm, though. Yeah. The best is when you get a customer's like, I need the loudest one you got. So we give them the loudest one they got, and they're like, Jesus, do you have anything else? I'm like, hey, man, you're the one that wanted the ear bleeder that we put on, like, fucking shit that we put down the ports. I think the loudest one we have is... Uh, like 180 decibel like it is like like it's like it, it just murders your ears dispatch to get me some uh, after the peak season and the holidays and all that shit I gotta get the fuck out of there for a couple days to work on something dirty as fuck and greasy and nasty and yeah, maybe I'll give Art a call to work down the ports work down the corners, that's fun. I'm gonna smell like old bay all like for the rest of the day, but I'm actually pretty good with that.
trying to figure out if we can tip it over. And most forklifts, you can if you try. Like, normal operation is pretty difficult to tip an uh, a forklift, but you can if you try. And we're stuck. That's funny, like, it's not clipped, like, it is just straight wedged in that bitch. Come on, there we go. Uh, we don't have a target anymore. Did I break the target? Uh, it looks like I broke up now. Oh, there, what? <laughs> Alright! Breaking stuff. I ain't never seen a forklift do that and land on its wheels. It usually doesn't come out very well. And I have picked up many a forklift in my career. <laughs> oh, hey, let's see. Undercarriage is... Actually, that's somewhat accurate for a lot of them. It thinks I am the goal. Whoa, whoa, hey... Our goal's back, alright. <laughs> Our... what? Uh, that actually has individual box physics. Can I actually get this off the wire? Before? Glitch, glitch, glitch in. Let's see if I can peel it off the floor. Wedge it up and you see Crashing with the conveyors, does that help? Well, that's now a permanent part of this forklift. Alright. Let's, uh... Let's go to... Wait, did someone literally just... For that? I'm gonna, I'm gonna visit my vape here for a moment. What was in the shop on the page you just left? Asked Gassy Mash, Gassy Mashy. Oh, you can spend your pay to get new colors. That it? it says select vehicle. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, okay. All right, hold on. Let's let's go through this. So we got this little guy here, which generally would actually be an electric forklift. Probably a 3,000 pound, maybe. Yeah, you might be able to get 4,000 pounds out of that. Yeah, you probably get 4,000 pounds out of that. This is more of your standard uh, looking forklift. Uh, looks like it would most likely be a diesel or an LP. That's going to be from your 5,000 to like 9,000 pound range. Maybe a, a short chassis, uh, 10,000, I'm thinking. This looks more like your mid chassis. So like a, uh, I guess a 110 up to a 170. Oh, sorry. So when I say 110... Um, add two zeros, and that's the weight. So a 110 would carry 1,100 pounds. Like a 60 is a 6,000 pound. A 110 is 1,100 pounds. A 120 would be a 1,200 pound forklift. And that is the weight rating of the forklift and the carriage with no attachments. Once you start adding attachments, your actual weight capacity starts going down because the, capa the attachments count as weight. Attachments being, you know, like side shifts, uh, like you've seen in here, fork positioners, you can get carton clamps, baby spikers, roll clamps, um, different box clamps, um, you can get rotators for turning stuff upside down, all kinds of different stuff. So does this mean I can buy this vehicle? That does. That's like a lumber truck, so that would 
Yeah, that's taking your like probably a 155. Stick those forks on there. That could be lumber, or um, if you get uh, polished forks, it'd be good for uh, sheetrock. Can it have an RV awning? I mean, and a barbecue, add snake, snake hoist, the snake cannon, DVD player. No, actually, some of them you can get radios for. Yes, indeed. All right, so the biggest one we have is a lumber truck. I wonder if I buy... I have 3100 bucks. What can I actually... Get? I can get the next one up. Let's get the next one up. I can pick a color. Uh, I kind of like red. Uh, nah, you know what? That Then it looks like a Raymond. We'll stick with Heister. That's somewhere between Heister yellow and almost yelly yellowy orangey all right um good call on checking the shop gassy good sh i figured it was just like merchant shit all double mast oh yeah i didn't see let me see that's a that would be referred to as a two-stage mast. That would be two-stage free lift. Uh, that looks like a two-stage free lift. Yeah, they're all two-stage free lift masts. Just slightly bigger versions. Most of your lumber trucks are going to be two-stage anyway. Even though you're, most of your most forklifts come with two or three-stage. You occasionally get a quad mast. Um, but you don't see those too much. Um, just because you can usually get to where you need to go with uh, three-stage mass. Uh, let's see what's at the ship port. <clears throat> now that we have a different forklift. <coughs> sound, does that sound a little different? That sounds like a Kubota. The other one didn't sound like a Kubota, I don't think. Hold on, hold on. Sorry. No, that's the same. The other one, that, that, that kind of sounds like a Kubota. I mean, the biggest difference would be that it's actually running. Their diesels aren't too bad, but... <clears throat> Alright, new warehouse. Oh, sorry. Welcome to the new warehouse, operator. Let's start by rearranging the pallets to optimize space and improve workflow. Set up the layout for maximum efficiency. I'm gonna go back in my office and touch myself. Alright. While he's busy, I guess we'll uh, take care of this. That kind of looks like Komatsu. I guess all the levers are still wrong. Yep. Okay, that's fine. Are we level? Yeah. Alright, let's see uh let's see what's up out here. Bonk. <clears throat> is it like that like are we like nion forklift except our trail is yellow? Can you roll this bitch? Not normally. We haven't clipped out enough, I guess. Let's see. Yeah, we can... That's a tight squeeze. Hey, alright. Yeah. Oh, we try. Uh oh. This would be this this would be the area where the operators come to smoke a joint. And the exact same thing happens, they get the forklift stuck, and then we gotta come drag it out. Did you get enough running room? Nope.
Well, there's a definite specific path that this thing wants you to take to get out of there. Holy shit. I mean, this isn't a bad little game for, what, seven bucks? Seven ninety-nine, just derp around. Let's see what's over here. Can I pick these pallets up? So fake pallets are fake. <clears throat> Let's drive around with our forks about head height, as you do. Now we're about to Austin Powers this bitch. There we go. Come on. There it is. All right. Oop. Sorry. Wasn't high enough. God, that's enough fucking story. Well, you can't break the glass. You knock on the door where the boss's office is. Tell him to put his pants back on. Nope. Oh, look at that. We're up to 11 accidents, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we may actually see what happens uh, as a penalty. Like if they start whooping your ass or something. Like whoop, bring out the whips. But then again, that may not necessarily be much of a penalty. Um. Hmm. Alright, so let's see, what's back here? Uh, well, there's a shipping container. And uh, more fat sign. And another shipping container. Oh, actually, I think that's the same shipping container. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright, let's, uh, so I guess we'll see what happens when you have 14 accidents. So that's kind of a typical day for an operator. Uh, yeah. I'm guessing the advanced levels of this are just carrying pallets to the other little hangar looking areas over there. Back that ass up, up and down, straighten it out, spank the mama. Side shift. Oh, come on, dude. Center of forks. Right. Ball. Fifteen accidents. <clears throat> I'm gonna need a subscriber for every accident. Ah, uh, that doesn't have a bottom support. Did not like. Yes, okay, so this has a slightly different carriage setup than if you buy, bury the forks, it actually is dragging the forks. So these chains have not been properly adjusted because the forks should not touch unless you are tilted forward. And ladies and gentlemen, we are not tilted forward right now. Or I don't think we are. Maybe we are. Hold on, let's see. Well, motherfucker. Not bad. Okay, it'll stop touching tilt. Well, if we stop crashing into shit, it will stop fucking its tilt up. Where are we going? Here? Jeez. I don't know, just... 
pick this thing? Holy shit. And sticky pallet physics. Try loading it up from this side. It kind of made that symbol like it wanted me to turn something around. So maybe if we just roll up back. No. Don't know what you. Oh no! It wants me. I got it. Ooh, that was luck. I got it side picked, it wants it flat picked. <clears throat> yeah, Christian, that would be great if there was like a little ramp in here. Uh, I'll go ahead and load it from the correct side just in case that matters. of the mystery you, you, you can't see or those awful songs with random police siren frequency in them. Yeah, I don't really understand, like, I fucking hate when I'm listening to the radio and some, when, like, I'm not really paying attention to the radio and then there's some fucking song or commercial that has a siren in it and I'm like, what the fuck? <clears throat> and not, I don't mean like I'm lost in the world. I mean like I'm paying attention to my driving and not the radio. And then suddenly you hear sirens and it's like, what the fuck? I thought there was a law against that shit. Then we're in the same spot. And that does not work. This is our last pallet. Um, let's go ahead and get 20 accidents. Let's just set that right there for now. Accident penalty. Work on Toyotas. I that. Like, Toyotas aren't a horrible forklift to work on. It's just a problem that their wire harnesses are fucking garbage. Like... <clears throat> See, this would be fun if they had one of these doors open, and like you had jump physics. Bonk. Um, like Toyota Forkers aren't horror to work on. Some of their transmissions have problems, and they lost about a year's worth of sales, actually, um, in 2021 into 22, something like that. Because uh, the U.S. Uh, EPA Environmental Protection Agency <clears throat> requires them to meet certain emission standards. And they're like, oh, yeah, they're fine. They're great. Toyota's like, yeah, they're lovely. 
And then they started selling them and importing them. And they had a shitload of forklifts in the United States. And then the EPA went, you know what? We want to take a look at those emissions for you real quick. And they did. And they found out that they were way out of compliance. And they actually made Toyota take the rest of the forklifts out of the United States. They were like that pissed off about it or whatever. Um, so they had to go, Toyota had to go through and redo all their emissions and all this shit to uh, be allowed to sell uh, liquid propane and gasoline powered forklifts in the United States. Like, that's 80% of their business as far as Toyota Industrial goes. Oh yeah, 23? Can I, can I get a 25? <clears throat> and, all right, let's go put that pallet in place and see what the boss thinks of 25 axes for four pallets. Good job, buddy. You only cost three thousand dollars worth of damage to your forklift. Here's a fifty dollar bonus. Okay. Push it, please. Physics. Da -da. He's still smiling though, like he, he's, I guess he's happy that the pallets made it, even though it uh, took 25 collisions to do so. <clears throat> we need to optimize our pallet arrangement operator. Oh yeah. Rearrange them strategically to maximize space utilization and facilitate easy access to inventory. Let's make the most of our storage capacities, cause we got a big fucking truckload of dildos on the way. Ooh, yeah. Alright. Truckload of dildos. On the, why did that door open and close? Was that boss man leaving? Did a mystery dildo just come flying through the door? Get back here! Nope. Alright. Oh, we only have 350 bucks. It is a little slow to earn money in this game. <clears throat> I wonder if it carries over from, uh... From, uh, like, chapter to chapter or whatever. Stage to stage. Wrong button. This is a pretty good guide. <clears throat> I have to pay more attention to that. It's a shame that shit doesn't happen on fucking uh, real pallets.
runaway, yeah, runaway throttle like I'm a Prius in this bitch. Just install that. No oh, wait, they they want this one inside with this. Okay. No, 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 that's a good one. For those who, uh, uh, I do have, uh, some t-shirt designs uploaded, <clears throat> and I have decided I'm going with Printify, because Printify just recently uh, was able to have a storefront built into it and you didn't and it doesn't require you to get like Shopify or some other kind of storefront on top of the YouTube thing. So it won't be linked directly to the channel but I'll just, you know, it kind of links and shit. Um, but Printify is like top notch, like they're good stuff <clears throat> and they keep it quality because they're the only t-shirt company that I, that I had found. I mean, I'm sure there's other ones. Like they're the only print-on-demand company that I've found where you can pick your printer and the printers are rated by other creators so you have a genuine idea of what you're getting. Um, so as soon as all the designs are done and we hit a thousand, then I'll uh, make 350 bucks. <coughs> what do you got here? Chipmunk, I have no money. This month to spare, but thank you. Well, thank you, and you didn't, you could have just said it. I appreciate the two pounds or whatever weird thing that's going to pop up in dollars. But if you've got no money, then you shouldn't be giving it to my ass. Or any of the rest of me, really. But always appreciate it for the channel, so thank you. We all, but it's the holidays, like, everybody's, you know, you got, you got, everybody has other priorities, as they should. Well, I mean, assuming you got, like, fam fam and stuff. And we're just going fuck the fuck again. Chipmunk has been drinking since 2.30 p.m. That's fine. I've been smoking since about 2.30 p.m. So, uh... It's that always works out for everybody.
Don't forget to tell Miss J that her fella says hey there, Chippy. Okay, so apparently, um, this, this is this is it. Hmm. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna have a sip of soda pop here. It's four hundred dollars in the current exchange rate. Really, like, I know, uh, I know all the UK to dollar and back and forth shit's all over the place lately. Ugh, <clears throat> she was out of it tonight. But I am. Next time you talk to her. Oh yeah, Christ, in the land of vapes. I picked up a disposable vape from Curio called uh apple cider donut and i figured well hell yeah i like apple cider i don't know what the donut part is but yeah i'll try apple cider donut that is gross it tastes like fucking pumpkin pie like i almost wonder if like it got boxed wrong like and i do not like pumpkin stuff like it is the grossest shit so like i've been using that at night kind of use it up a little bit here and there or like when I'm doing something that I'm not paying much attention to it because <laughs> it just tastes nasty like it works you know like it, it definitely does what you need it to but uh ugh. and of course I'm out of bubble gum so I can't like try to like mint it up a little bit or anything so I've been like hitting it up and then like going to eat a bunch of chocolate. I agree we're a little crooked here. I think we're pulling up the side of the trail. And we're turning it. You want me to turn the little bit? Oh, 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 wait, oh, wrong button. Back that ass up. Ooh. I think I should hit this. Mike and Go says, is the game easy or are you just good at it? Well, this is the first time I've played it. Uh, I played it once yesterday for two minutes just to make sure it worked. I'm going to start doing for now on because this was supposed to be back rooms night, but uh, the beta ended and I didn't know that. So we went to Fort Worth Simulator. This was actually supposed to be in two weeks, but uh, now it's today. But um, I would say it's a f somewhat of an easy game, but it does actually help. I would say that having experience, like I know, even though the controls are weird, like I kind of know, like um, when I'm rolling up to these pallets and I'm picking them up while I'm moving, like that's how I do it in real life use most of the time. Like as long as I know that the forks are, you know, in, in a good spot. This mass is a little tough. But like, like pulling in like that and just popping out, you know, like it's obviously a little bit smoother in real life, but that's how I drive them normally. Like I don't, I just zing in, zing out. Like if I'm loading or unloading something, which isn't often, because I don't, I'm not an operator, you know. Um, but like, you know, if I'm unloading shit that, for the site or I got to move stuff around or, you know, what have you. And, um, Decent enough operator. I just don't. Just don't need to do it that often. As far as like picking stuff up, I mean, obviously I'm driving forklifts every day because I'm, you know, I'm working on them, I'm testing them. I'm not one of those bonehead technicians that'll walk into a job, change a part, and then not even fucking start the truck and call it good. 
parts. Like, we got a couple of those. I think they still work there. Like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? You wouldn't change an alt meter and you didn't even fucking start it and drop a volt meter on that bitch? What? What's up, Fixer69? Scruffload, it looks like you have good spatial awareness and, and some driving experience. It's not too hard. It's not bad. It's not. Like, I'm kind of, like, it probably also helps that since I work on every type of forklift and every manufacturer, like, I am primarily a Heister Yale technician, but I fix anything, like, just put it in front of me and I'll fucking figure it out. Hey, we have a ramp. And I'll figure it out. Like, I think, like, all but, like, a couple, woo, trucks in my time. Um, oop. <clears throat> but, uh, it helps because I, you have to learn to quickly adapt to various controls and shit because the placement and how it operates and like even you know different forklifts they may all have the same function but you're sitting differently or have different things in front of you different mass designs so you know, you're able to see different things you know uh perspective sorry let's see here all right hold on Go ahead and stop. And stop. And stop. And stop. And go. Hmm. Okay. Now I on four clips here. Like, are we getting there? Ooh. Steer wheels came up a little bit. Well, glitchy. It has suspension, which that I just noticed that. Does the rear end have? The rear end has suspension. That yeah, forklifts don't have suspension. Suspension is like there's a rubber bushing back there in the center, in between the wheels, like where it sits in the frame, but it is not suspension. There is no give on your fucking tires when you hit a bump. If you have solid tires on that thing, you, you fucking feel the gravel. That's why most customers, like a lot of customers, if they do a lot of outdoor stuff, they'll get, like, the upgraded seats. <clears throat> um, so that they're not just beating the shit out of their operators. Some, <clears throat> they have some seats on forklifts that are literally, like, no joke, $2,500, $3,000, $4,000. But let me tell you, them fucking seats are more comfortable than what you're sitting in right now. And I don't care what the fuck you're sitting in, like, for the most part, you know, just short of a lazy boy. Some of them air suspension, like, full ride, advanced, like, auto cushioning bullshit fucking seat space. They sell in some of these, uh, the bigger forklifts are just, <clears throat> it's, they're basically, uh, Long haul trucker seats. And they are just they are just a dream to sit in. It's a shame like the only time you ever like get a hold of one is when it's broke. And they're usually broke to the point it's not even worth trying to take home and fix. 
because by the time people give up on them, they, they've been so beaten and abused because they're so expensive to replace <clears throat> and even repair. Like some of them seat cushions will be 1500 bucks. Speared the forks into the ground. Seen that happen too. Never done it. Seen it happen. Had to go to a call. They had one they hit so hard that it actually broke, like stuck into the point where they couldn't back the forklift out of it. <clears throat> they had to call us in just for us to like, okay, we'll just get your other forklift and watch this. Hold my beer. Yoink. Kinky custom mode, enjoy it. Air seats. Yeah, air suspension seats. I mean, you'll be on the, the seat itself will be sitting on air, and then the cushions themselves are air. And then they'll have springs in there as well. Uh, you know, for different, you know, it's all different dampening, I guess, pressures and like, almost you know, like frequencies, but, you know, they're all different. A few different <coughs> uh, types of dampening just to make sure, like, you just don't feel a goddamn thing. Wow. I'm zoning through that one. How much money do we have? We don't really have much money, do we? Hold on. Let me click start. No. Alright. As exciting as this is, I guess, um... Did we go to the middle one? What was the middle one? Oh, yeah, it was the factory. That one was kind of derp, too. All right, let's go back to the warehouse. Let's go to day... Yeah, let's go to day eight with the big four books in a little tiny warehouse. Wow, this is literally exactly just where we were. <laughs> just a lot more pallets. All right, we're going to rock through this one and then... Uh... Have this little smoky smoky and evaluate our situation. Oh, this forklift's too big. Is this taller than 89 and then an 89 inches? Oh no, it goes in. Uh -huh. Giggity. I guess in this level they expect you to use the smaller ones for learning how to pull the pallets. Two pallets out. One with each fork, which actually is not that difficult to do as long as pallet physics works. This does make this a little more challenging because you don't fucking fit. Gotta get the lumber truck into this motherfucker. Why do you feel like we're glitching? That pallet is a little glitchy. Oh god, just get in. Push that pallet forward a little bit there, boss. Now 
we're glitched into something. I think we were glitched into the shelf. Pallet physics. <clears throat> since we started the peak season because I'm fucking rolling out the door at like, you know, 4.20. <laughs> I wish it would fucking smoke in the morning, but I'm rolling out the door at like 4.20 in the morning most mornings. And McDonald's are... Whoa, where are we going there, Paul? McDonald's around here doesn't open until, uh, like 5? By then, I'm already on site. And right, right, so today I was back clock. That works weird. Tilt's acting weird. But no, but anyway, by 5 o'clock today, I was actually, I was already on like, my second truck. Kinda stuck. Alright. Uh, uh, let's just get out of that. That pallet is a mess right now. Monk is off to bed. Yeah, some McDonald's here are 24-7, but I'm nowhere the 24-7 ones are around here. I'm not fitting in the truck. So this, these levels were, uh, apparently, like I'm all the way to pick the forks up? No, oh, no, there we go. Okay, forks just got home. Yeah, I don't know where the uh, 24 hour McDonald's is around here. Like, I can't wait till I get a day to go in late because, like, they know me. Like, they literally know me there at the McDonald's I go to every morning. Yeah, it probably helps me to drive around, you know, for years at a time with a Pennywise clown in your, uh, <coughs> in your van. can go it also just I mean as far as playing video games you know as long as as long as you're a gamer you can kind of sort out this kind of stuff usually pretty quick I think most of the simulator games like like, you know, like pressure washer simulator which I saw that that was a real game I was like cool <clears throat> but uh that was a whole nother trick um they're generally made to be a little simpler than maybe the real thing. Just to make it well, fun-ish. I 
I'll see what's going on with various games, but at this point in two weeks, as far as a game goes, oh wait a minute, two weeks. Uh, uh, it's okay, yeah, that'll be after the, uh, the thing. Um, we may go, go back to a little bit of herbal, because there has been a patch. A couple of patches released that actually fixed a lot of the derpy problems. So we'll see how that patch goes. Maybe do a couple, like, maybe do a quick mission or so. And they literally said in their changelog that they want all saves from this point on. Should You should not have to reset any saves. And I guess we'll see how accurate that is. Um... But that does give me confidence that hopefully our next save will actually last a long time, unlike the other one that just got so full of corruption from just all the buggy game uh, dealings with. But then apparently, well, they're saying in December, um, hopefully that's accurate, but you know, I'm, if they say January or February, I'm not going to be upset or disappointed, because I know that's just how that goes with devs. But apparently the next big update is the science update. Um, so we'll actually have stuff to do. Besides just landing and planting a flag. But we'll see how that goes. Never know, maybe a, a nice, nice nifty game that comes out that we play instead. Because I'll tell you what, I ain't gonna want to play, you know, since it's, it, it, it's... Oh, I never did do the poll for the game, did I? Wow, shit, I should do that. <laughs> At least I know if you're here now, you'll, you're, you're fucking hardcore, that's for sure. Um, yeah, let me, uh, drop the forks here. Crash there. Roll over here. Let me do a pull real quick. Uh, how do we get out of this? There we go. So this will be this poll, and then there'll be this poll again on Saturday Ooh, night to finally narrow down the up to 12 hour gaming spree. Which game for November 24th? Life 2 or Alien Isolation. <clears throat> Boobia. Ah, I also don't know of any forklifts that sound so smooth when you're operating the hydraulics. Like the clunkiness, the kukum kukum, like that's actually pretty accurate. But the, the like soft hum as it rises is like, nah. <laughs> that's not how that works. Alright. Oh yeah, we turned the music off. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna turn it back on just so I can go bam bam bam. Turn it down a little bit more. I don't know. I can't actually hear what the volume you hear of the music. So if it's too low, too high, or too annoying, just let me know. Shoom. Shoom. 
All right, where's that pole standing? Wow, that's going different than I thought it would. <clears throat> okay. VT, VL, VF, Forkies. Reasonably close looking. What? It's like 10% background. Well, it's, you know, it's set to 10%. Now it's actually 10% and minus 20 decibels. But also keep in mind my mic is set to minus 4 decibels. Alright, let's grab a, uh, let's grab a dab. Or grab a dab. God, maybe I'll... No, I'm doing a hash tonight, not a dab. <clears throat> Let's grab a vape, do a toast. I'll turn it up a pinch. Alright, uh, where do we want to do a toast to? Let's see, Christian's here, so we'll get Kevin and Ukraine covered. Um... Uh, the forklifts in the sim Yale versus well they look pretty close to uh looks like closer to that like that looks they look more like young Heinrichs than like Yales or Heisters the color is like mostly Heister yellow which is golden nugget yellow and uh what the fuck is the Yale color it's like gold it's like harvest gold i think it's like literally like golden harvest orange or some weird fucking stanley steamer orange color thing that's horrible but uh let's do a cheers to uh the cheers to anyone that has to deal with anything mechanical in their job whether it be operating it fixing it staring at it poking at it let's do that and kevin and ukraine so cheers to mechanical people <clears throat> all right and for my other vape cheers to you for hanging out for this long seems like some of you have actually been here for a little while this is a uh i, I realize this is a super a super exciting game and all to mechanics in general to the pokies the, the pokies Skull. this one's kind of clogged this is more fun than the back rooms game might be. The back rooms work one actually has an entity in it. So if I do any more back room style games, I want there to be something other than walking around. The little entity action wouldn't hurt. But uh, cheers to you. Cheers to the gaggle of goofballs. Um, if you, uh, I guess if you've hung out this long, if you're not already a subscriber, you might as well hit that button. If you don't mind, uh, uh, cheers. Oh, man. We have a t-shirt. That is one of the t-shirt designs that I finished is the goofball, gaggle of goofball t-shirts. <coughs> Actually, I have, what, four designs up there? And the one you will never hear about until it is launched. It is, I want to break the store with it. Yeah, like if you want to start your own line of Kevin shirts there, Christian, by all means, Printify is free to use for everyone. Set up your own store and they will print and send you profit. And the prices are actually pretty fucking good. It's going to be cheaper than if I was at Teespring because I'll be able to sell the t-shirts at $22.99 a piece. At least at current pricing levels, which... They want you to sell them at like 27 and 28, but well, how I'm going to work that is any profit. I think I already said, oh, did I say this Saturday? But any profits from the t-shirt just goes right back into the t-shirt. 
So like the profit pays for giveaway t-shirts. Like anything I get, I'm just gonna roll back into for like giveaways if we do something like that. Cause like giving away memberships is cool, but it's, uh, you know, but giving away like a t-shirt or some like dog tags or something like that. That's kind of cool. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so we'll see how that goes. How much is the big boy? 10 grand. I don't know where you're using that thing at in this game. I don't even know if that would fit in the truck. I'll see if there's a way to hack the uh, save game to give you like a ton of money. <clears throat> and then we'll try to drive this into a tractor trailer. On spawns, this game is real? Yeah, I said the same thing. Like, someone suggested it a few weeks ago, and I went, no. And then I punched it in, and there are a lot of forklift simulator games, including this line. Like, there's been, like, a bunch from this company, I think, or at least a bunch of games called forklift. Like, there's 2019, 2020, I think the 2022. <clears throat> but there are a lot of forklift games out there. It is fucking hilarious. Now, okay, let's run back in the factory with the big fork real quick. It's a shame you can't, like, change the sound of the end. Wow, this is going to be really interesting, this fork. Right, where do you want to go? Oh. Well, it's a shame you can't change the sound. I wonder if that's something I can look to. I wonder if they're like, if they're not super complex sounds, if I could like start recording shit at work and plug it into the game. I think that's the that second shelf. Second shelf in the open on him. Not, not in this warehouse, buddy. the fact that the operating view here is a little tweet. So this one, it doesn't quite turn like a bus, but uh, it's close. Seriously, I think that stamp on the pallet, I'm pretty sure I looked at that stamp today on a pallet of gear oil that I uh, unloaded. We had so much extra gear oil at Amazon for working on the MDUs. Um, apparently, someone accidentally literally doubled the order, which actually didn't work out to be too bad. Uh, we used a lot. Woo. We used a lot of it, but they ended up using us as, like, they were like, yeah, if we need anything, we're just going to come uh, grab it from you every once in a while. I'm like, that's cool. I, I, basically, they turned us into the inventory for uh, overstock for gear oil. 
But today they came and got uh, most of the rest of it. I kept what I what I figured I would need, and I gave the rest to them just to make it a little bit easier. I guess it's kind of weird to have uh, your gear oil kind of stored in an annex, you know, a mile and a half down the road. Now I got to turn this thing on. is palettes aren't slippery like they are in real life. That one was a little slippy, like it should be. Uh, maybe certain, maybe certain pallets are uh, have different physics tags or something on them. Honestly, it's not a bad game. Even though, like, I deal with this shit on a daily basis, this is just, like, easier. It's kind of relaxing. I guess it's, like... <clears throat> I feel like I, I've heard simulator games compared to, like, uh, like, we were talking about it at work. It's almost like video game ASMR. Because you're just doing very easy, simple not horribly challenging tasks and you're getting things done and it takes your mind off the stuff like does that seem accurate it's like i don't know like i have not really paid a whole lot of attention to a lot of simulator games but i've been kind of looking around lately and that's what it kind of seems like it's like video game asmr I'll leave that pole up just for a moment there. I don't know half like two came back. Clutch. Yeah, I'll just let that run for a little while, just in case anybody else stops by. Because in the United States, people. Yeah, actually, you know what? I wasn't going to stop. Kind of considered stop playing, but I guess I'll go for a little while longer because more people in the. US are starting to get off work and then maybe they'll want to stop by and hang out. So I guess we'll just keep going with the uh, super excitement to that it is. <clears throat> and on Doom Day, on December Sunday, December 10th, I'm gonna start that stream probably around noon, maybe one. I'll figure it out as um, as the day gets closer. But that's gonna when I get to Doom Eternal, I'm just gonna play like, well, why is it going backwards? Oh, it actually shifted gears. Um, once I get to the end, Doom Eternal, I'll probably just playing that for a little while. That's a fun, that's a very fast paced game. It says I have two accents, but I think I backed into something. Like that. 
Alright. Ooh, we got $100 bonuses on that one, even with two collisions. Chucking health kits to each other with the gravity gun. I can imagine what, uh, some half or a portal? Or, uh, yeah. Half Life multiplayer. Or is that what we're talking about here? I see a little thing Half Life makes sound all Yes. <clears throat> Load the truck. It's time to load the trailer, operator. Smooth operator. Mm. Ensure the pallets are securely stacked, balancing weight distribution, and maintaining stability for safe staff. Ugh, safe transportation. I like to use big words because I'm a dumbass. Whoa. Too big a forklift. See, it'd also be good if you could duck a little bit or somehow change your center focal point so you could look under the pallets to see the forks or look over. <clears throat> you know, the, the obstacles or whatever. I took a nap today and Spaz basically slept on my head. So I'm just like... raptured with fucking Spaz hair stuck in my nose. blown up there. Let's see. You play this like <clears throat> played sim ship. Putting a cruise ship alongside in 20 seconds. Cut. Like, I've never got into any of this. Like, even like The Sims. Like, you know, the game that's actually called The Sims. Like, I've never even played that. <clears throat> never really got, I've never really gotten into like those kind of things. Like Microsoft Flight Simulator, I've been playing that. Uh, I played the original one, I played a, a newish one, but I haven't played the newer one. Like the newest one. Uh, but I will uh, see, like, I'd like to be able to duck to see. Just like, ooh, jeez, alright, let me see if I can lay this thing down. Nope. It's like I'm all hung up here. Oop, there we go. Oh, th I'm not really in the Sims game. Alright, Microsoft Flight Sims. I do, I am. <clears throat> oh, son of a bitch. 
I am considering getting uh, the newest simulator. I heard it's just fucking amazing. I heard it's amazing as is, and it's just like, ho, 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 ho. just like when you start putting in mods and shit. Like, I don't know what kind of mods they have for it, but I don't know. I guess they have mods for it. I figure the 3070, since it's overclocked, like, past the 3090, should be able to handle it. Should do pretty good. Uh, if I can crank up the graphics, you know, whenever I get that, which, getting double time, and then whatever I'm getting get the next day, uh, when I'm working that Friday, that'll definitely, uh, get some goodies, payoff, a couple of things, Get me a stream deck. Mark 2. 15 button. Yeah, it's weird. I started went to start the stream today. YouTube said something about integrating uh, the stream deck directly with the stream. So I guess they have a... Uh, they must have a plug-in or something for uh, stream control. I guess I'll look into that once I get it. I don't want to do much research on like plugins and stuff on the Elegato stream decks until I get it because I don't want to go through and just forget everything. You know. Ship sim was hilarious. Racing cruise ships from Dover to Calais Cal in real time, one meter apart. Oh lord. Trying to hit the arrow keys with shift or control. Uh, it does not care. Let's up. <coughs> Alright, what am I doing here? Oh, it shifted gears on me when I hit the shift key. I've been watching a lot of streams with uh, gamers getting caught cheating online when they turn their, like, they accidentally turn their hacks and shit on. <clears throat> or a couple where, uh, like, people in chat have been like, hey, uh, like all casual shit, hey, could you go ahead and hit the blah 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 key? And they're like, bam, here comes fucking, like, what is it, uh, <clears throat> it's a cheat engine or engine cheat, some big one that like seems like they all fucking use. I see that one a lot. I think it's just funny watching that shit. Like it gets to the point where they got keyboard cams, which I did try keyboard I have tried keyboard cams. They are neat, but I do think it's funny when people are requiring it uh, before they'll believe your stream. Uh, I have to turn this. Yeah. But now there's a funny to launch. And then like the dumbass excuses like the, the Clara incident. <laughs> I hope YouTube pulls its head out of its ass and tells Sniper Wolf, uh, SS Sniper Wolf to go fuck himself. And bans her. She is, she is not a good person, like, she is, there is so much fucking dirt coming out on her, like, she is not a good person, she needs to, like, stop misrepresenting creators and stealing other people's shit all the time, including their identities, like, what the fuck, where's, oh, there it is.
Mike and Co is mad, y'all. He wants them bikes. Boop. Whoa, 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 we are drifting backwards here. Come on now. Get on that throttle. Oh, okay. It must be a Kubota. Oh, shit. Get a goddamn running start. Pick it. Slide fork. Slide forks. There's not a
This deck attack going crazy. 34.9 million. 34.1 million. So what was that? Sets. Uh, that says Bushi Wolf. Hundy, can you block the trucks in with crates? Um, sure, it could. I gotta get a new wrist fucking rest thing. This one's starting to finally ooze all the gel after uh, nine years, eight or nine years. <coughs> Get ready to unload the trailer, operator. Exercise caution as you remove the cargo and place the pallets in their designated areas. Let's maintain our highest standards of efficiency and stop playing with our balls when we're supposed to be loading pallets. Thanks, buddy. I'm gonna go try out some new lube. Be back later. Yeah. See if we can drop our load. There's Lee. Mm. Oh good, we have the slightly too big forklift to pick up. get to do the super cool stuff. Wow. Roll right up into that one. Holy shit. Five pallets of lubricant for Rob unloading now, yes. This is to make the bands easier. Oh, 
almost 420 somewhere. The warehouse is full of holes and scrapes. Is everything okay to help you? making the magical suspension on the forklift like there is no suspension on the forklift. Twerk and throws everybody out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, skirt. Mm, backwards. Oh, we're actually loading the truck. Rage at the truck truck. You'd be surprised at some shit you hear about. <laughs> so we had a dude at our in our company uh, was it last year. He went to go pallet jack a. Uh, this is gonna be shitty without being on this. Let's see. Went to go PM a pallet stacker, which is basically a little pallet jack that has a tiny, tiny mask on it, so you can you know stack stuff. It's mostly used in like supermarkets where they can't really put a forklift back there. Uh, but he went to jack it up, wasn't paying attention, fucked it up, and dropped that bitch right on the front of his service van. That is now an example video in our company. Congratulations. Are we going straight in or are we loading it wide? We're going straight in. This mask 
kind of sucks for these height shelves. Pallets, what? Four out of five? What happened? That's weird. I got aimed to pay for that shit. What an asshole. Hey, everybody. Captain Asshole Pants here. We had a cargo to switch today, operator. Your mission is to transfer the goods from one trailer to another. Maintain proper inventory management and securing the cargo for safe transport. I'll be back later to fuck you out of your paycheck, asshole. Good luck. Alright. Does the poll end? Uh, we'll give it a little, a little bit longer. People are getting home, getting a poop on. We'll give it like another ten minutes or so. didn't count as an accident. Dude, if I would have done that in real life, I would have ripped the whole right in that trailer. <laughs> no mercy. I really think the lowest setting is that, like, a little too low. But that's probably because it's already dealing with a somewhat of a deep voice.
next boss man what we got going on here If you can get a nitrous upgrade for these, nice. Generally speaking, when you're driving with a forklift and you're on the move, you want to keep the forks three to six inches off the ground. Turning it, folks. We are turning it. Oh, there goes a wham ring. Short changes, that's always nice. What a douche. Crotch height. Yeah, I, I, yeah, some people do drive them at crotch height, and you gotta watch that. Woo! I wanna say yeah, a couple more minutes. We'll, uh, we'll finish this one, and then... Uh, where the hell am I going? Oh. Uh, and then... Uh, oh, there it is. We'll end the pool. Oh, shit. <laughs>
Because remember, if you drop a pallet of barrels, it's that easy to pick it back up. Oh, is that your sex loop, bro? I'm sorry about that. Seems like it was packed, packaged pretty well, though. I think it'd be alright. I'm just shaking it up for you. A little pre mix. Pervert view. Hey, what are you doing? I'm touching myself back here. And away we go. Hey, let's try not to drop them this time. Hey, you know what? Tilt <laughs> that shit back. Bam. Technically, you should be backing down this ramp to uh, do this successfully. Like in the real world. But luckily, the, the pallet physics in this game make that not necessary. Ooh. I was off the pallet. Why are you sticky? Why are you so sticky? Stop being sticky. Oh, it's because tilt's all fucking dumb. Hold on. There we go. That, 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 that works. Ralph says I need to use quality of loop. I'm trying to load it up. Aha. Uh -huh. Raise your forks on approaching ramps so that you don't spear them. We covered that earlier. Shot of whiskey on lunch. We're going straight in now. We're turning. Alright, fuck, let's do that out here. Let's shit in the line. Insane, how the hell do you do that thing you've seen during your career when you've turned up on site? Wow. Um, I 
that I've personally gone to probably when uh, actually the, there's a, a company not too far from where I live. Um, they, which is isn't that uncommon. It's just when it's your first time. Yeah, when it's your first time, it's always special. Um, someone drove an electric forklift directly off the dock. Like, zing! Like, Dukes of Hazard, that motherfucker. And, uh, when it landed, it went, uh, forks down <clears throat> into the asphalt and actually broke the tips off the forks uh, as it slammed down to the ground. The surveillance footage was fucking priceless. Like, everybody was fine. Nobody got hurt, which, you know, made it better. Uh, but yeah, that was an interesting one. Like, let's see, what else? Like, there's been some really good ones that I've not been directly involved with. Uh, like, we've had a couple top loaders get flipped. Top loader, just to give you an, uh, an idea here. So this, your standard forklift size, showing it this view, just, you know, you can see, you know, an 8,000 pound capacity lift. And of course, that's when that happens. But, yeah, hold on, let's go here. So, like, well, yeah, that's what we're driving. So this 8,000 pound, say, capacity lift. So the one they flipped, well, um, actually, here, okay. <laughs> Let's do this again. So like about 8,000, or I'm sorry, about the 6,000, like a 10,000, or like a 12,000, 15,000, usually a 1550 right here with the lumber forks on it. So that's 15,000 pound load capacity on this particular forklift. Twice, someone has rolled a 115,000 pound capacity forklift that is meant to pick up shipping containers like you see over on the side here um, with top picks. Um, twice I've had to deal with that. I've seen a, uh, a mast, let's see, so like a 60 foot tall ma like forklift mast on one of these. Um, so like the mast being the central deal right here. So like this one right here, since it fits in that truck is probably 89 inches to the top. <clears throat> well, actually, I'm sorry. This one and that one and this one, same size mass, 89 inches probably to the top right there so we can get inside a trailer. That one would not. Um, so you figure that's what 89 inches, that's what uh, like seven and a half feet seven and a half ish feet so we think 60 feet so like six you know almost six stories tall a mast that the width of it would be wider than the this forklift is long um and they've bent those by running in the shit like i have a picture of one that is just fucking like you can see it is just boring twisted and those masts weigh sixty-three thousand pounds themselves I believe the cost on it was 150000 just for the mast itself. And, uh, someone broke it. Derpa 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 do. Oh god, there's Brandon. Heister, do you copy? I copy Heister. Oh, we got a fucking another bolt on K35. What's up, Brandon? This is, uh... This is an exciting motherfucking game, let me tell you. We may have to bring this in uh, and have you do some training on it just to make sure you're uh, up to par as I crash in the pallet. Where are we going here? I don't like the, oh, pallet's falling off in that hole. Pallet physics. Oh, oh, almost had it. There we go. Ugh. I still probably don't have a say in the IP infringement. Yeah, this is everything's just going to be just enough different in this game that no uh, no OE OE is going to be able to uh, 
calls a stank. Man, I'm like starting to get a little bit high. That's pretty good. So, like we're getting like super ultra realistic fucking uh, operator simulator here. It's a shame I don't drink anymore. I mean that's like all your best operators are fucking drunk half the time. Chris, we've had to deal with a crane operator that was fucking hammered. Like, dude. It was, and it was one we were putting together, like, literally hanging those 63,000 pound fucking masts on top of it. And the fucking dude was, like, hitting his little snifter deal fucking pocket flask. Like, what the fuck, man? Ah! Fucker. Not working for our company. Uh, someone we had to hire in a third party. High capacity creams. Uh, you can't get. I was Brandon. I was telling him about the uh, the fucking dude that got hung up on the shelves the other day. So you got video of that dude. I didn't even notice that if they even fixed it. I know they cleared it, but I don't know if they actually fixed it or not. Straighten that shit out if it'll actually come off the forks. Alright, good. Swing and a miss. Alright, let's just tuck it in using this fucking shell. That's another thing people love to do. Let me just tuck this pallet in with an upright to a shell. Boing! I got shelf supports that look like fucking Cupid's arrow. So many cone golf supports at that warehouse. There we go. Does this game come in VR? I don't know. Uh, if it does, like we'll look into it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is this a different warehouse? Oh, there's that door closing again. It's like some fucking backrooms bullshit. Oh yeah, I forgot to read the fucking mission. My bad. It's, you know, again, just like a real operator. Just point. Don't, they don't, half the time, don't want to fucking follow their directions anyway. Oh, we are hauling balls. Try not to lose the power. Lift some weed into a joint, I think, says Rob. It's always a good thing. Oh yeah, have we uh have we jump checked this one yet? Or was that the the uh, the why is it glitching so bad? <laughs> ah, there ain't gonna get Oh yeah, no, that's right. We did jump check this one because of the rear suspension, which does not exist on any forklift. It's a shame it doesn't have a speedometer. It feels like it's going faster than the, like, the industry standard for the quote-unquote safe speed is six miles per hour. I don't know if that equates to something metric. We're gonna be shoving that off the backside every time. Drift around the corner. Box 
that's my new fucking chandelier painting. God, does anybody actually have chandeliers anymore? I don't know why I pulled that out of my fucking head. Chandelier, Jesus Christ. Oh, that's right. No, this house came with a chandelier. Got rid of that. Put up a fan. Well, that fan, actually. The one that you see the blade of occasionally. What the fuck am I hung up on? Jesus, K-35, motherfucker. There we go. Almost like we knew what we were doing. Oh, some of the bitch picked up on that one. Ooh, there's a the doorway. Sorry, just saw another fucking email come across with our holiday schedule. Dealing with it looks like New Year's shit. Yeah, Brandon, there was a whole fucking meeting between Joe, you know, the Joe, uh, the Chris, the lots of other people, the Matt. And the scruff to get all that shit sorted out. <clears throat> like it, that cut into my nap time too. I was, I was real happy about it. with this fork was. Come on. Bang. Right, let me get over here. Let's kind of shove it out into like the open area a little bit more. Uh, oh, there we go. Gas Master. We have a chandelier in the dining room of the new house. That had fucking 38 incandescent bulbs. That room got hot fast until I replaced them with four LED bulbs. Yeah, jeez. Chandelier in here. Oh, Chandelier in here. Uh, I think it had like 10 bulbs. It was like a, four, a ring of four and then like six, you know, something like that. like straight up hung up on a flight like, trained by Amazon come on glitch it out glitch it out let me see what it is. Brandon can you fucking go get the jack can I back that up oh there we go
But this one's taking me forever. I'm definitely just feeling a little bit more high. That's cool. I'll take another fucking vape here in a second. <laughs> Well, well, we're uh, we're holding steady, and like the average duration view is going up and up. Like people are hanging out. I do find it interesting the games that like we all watch. Like I watch. Like I mostly watch. Uh, like you know, fucking Matt Lone, Clown, Lone, Matt Lone. That loud. Loud? Ah, uh, I think it's loud. He does space stuff, Kerbal stuff. I haven't seen Carnassa in a while. I don't know if I... Maybe I wasn't subscribed to them, and they just were popping up in my feed for a while. But I mostly watch, like, Kerbal stuff. Watch some Doom Eternal. I don't watch a whole lot of, uh, gaming streams, which is funny, because I... Do gaming streams. I just kind of... Someone mentioned something about... Who was it? I forget who it was. Someone mentioned something about Penguin... What the fuck is it? Penguin Z0 or something like that? About uh, his microphone as I was dealing with my microphone situation. I actually watched some of his stuff lately. He's got some, seems like he's got some good content. He does a lot of live streaming stuff, too. Time bonus. Can't imagine why. Rob's entire flat is using 220 watts at the moment. Hold on. My computer is currently using 325 watts. <clears throat> That's pretty impressive. I guess, are you on mobile there, Rob? Or like a laptop or something? Because that's fucking impressive if uh, you're able to watch the stream on 220 watts. There we go. I need a stream. It is a fucking shame that I cannot dual check these motherfuckers off. Like, no, like, in the real world, like, no shit, you would just swing right in there with, uh, with your forks and just pick them both up and drag them both out of the uh, out of the truck at the same time, especially if they're lightweight stuff. So. Oh, this is another truck transfer. Oh, I forgot to read the mission again. I'm so fucking high. I'm forgetting all kinds of shit. Brakes, asshole! God damn. 
Fucking plugging on this is not it. Well, actually, I guess it won't be much plugging on this. It would be uh, trend breaking. Sucks I have to take my hand off the controls to hit side shift. That's why I'm not, that's why you're not seeing me use it too much. I have to take my hand off the mouse to go hit the side shift button. I'll probably re -cue. I have to rebind that. I'm going to be playing this for another second here. That shows you the controls. Can I re... Okay, alright. Uh, what was... What was the name? Arrow keys. Uh, movement X, left, right. Let's do... Uh, Z and X. Now, yeah, let's do 1 and 3. Because then I can just slide my fingers right up. Uh, let's see, I don't know if that's taken. Yeah, two and three. Let's do two and three. Is that the way on? Alright. Let's see. Shoot. Nice. Alright, I'll use slide shift a little bit more now. I mean, that means I gotta take it off the throttle, but that's fine. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that was one I just put there. Asshole. Ooh, that was a lucky guess. <laughs> Charlie, Penguin Zero, he is the source of commentary on what is going on in this internet and YouTube. It does seem like <clears throat> he is, uh, has much knowledge of such things. Seems like a pretty chill dude. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna check him out a little more. Okay, we still got four more pallets after this. Oh, Ooh, avoid the bolts. I can actually see it. Oh, maybe.
Gotta ship them dead bodies out, you know what I mean? I don't want them tipping over like arms and legs, flopping around in the warehouse. You gotta get somebody to clean this shit up. There goes Bob's leg. Bob, yeah, we all know. Told him not to go into the paper shredder. with physics. Hold on. What are we doing? You alright? I saw that fucking top end bounce. <clears throat> oh, now it thinks we are the target. That's good. Or no, I'm sorry. It's actually just directing us. I saw that physics bounce. Almost rolled it over again. the forks. I'm telling you, I'd love to adjust the forks. Like, drop that out. Yeah, you know, like, damn. Get some fork positioners on there. They put a little shift key on the lever if you got electronic controls. It'll throw a solenoid that you can, like, do it. Add fork positioners, even if you only have uh, <coughs> uh, three levers. Oh, yeah, Brandon, if you're still paying attention, like, here's lift. Lift up. Lower. That's good. Problem is, here's tilt. That's no good. And side shift. There's no side shift. Oh, I moved side shift. Dumbass. And side shift is just wrong. All, like, everything about side shift is wrong. There's tilt. Alright. I thought I saw a keybind for viewing from the forts. Okay. So, okay, that's like the lean ahead. It's slightly different. Yeah, we'll try that, see if that helps get into the, uh, Thanks there, Coach Sigal. I'm to take another look at that in a second. Slightly different perspective. That may be exactly what we need, you know. For that second shelf. Damn the second shelf! Whoa. Turn literally there. 
So yeah, I was, I don't know where I was going with that. So yeah, six miles an hour is the industry standard for like safe speed, but this feels like it's probably going like nine or ten. I forgot I even started that conversation like an hour ago. Yeah, that's probably because they go down the line. Industry standard and shit. What time are we going to, Stroff? That's what she said. Um, I don't know. I guess, um, why don't we finish this and one more? Let's do two more exciting levels. And then we'll uh, get ready to pack it up. Okay, let's try that new view. That's... Doesn't actually help on the second shelf. Oh, that sucks. <clears throat> Maybe that's good uh, for the higher shelves. over chicken tenders. Since I tend to make everybody hungry during my streams, like I'm fucking starving. Uh, I have leftover chicken tenders from breakfast that I'm going to dice up and just dump into some fucking gravy. Listen to my heart like screaming in preparation for the heart attack it's going to have later. do like a, a pretty easy entrance there and I fucked it all up right at the very end. See what that fort view does for this higher shot. Get a goddamn thing in line. Use us. <clears throat> Suddenly, I have no idea what I'm doing. That's a weird, different perspective that you can't like, do anything with. Huh. Cause like, that's a fixed perspective as well. Better if it was like actually on the fort. Or like on the carriage, like the real ones are. We got it. Four out of five, then we'll do one more uh, exciting cargo run after this, and then we'll get rid of it. I mean, I suppose, like, as, as far as calling this a simulator, like, that's not bad. Like, it's... Like, just a... If 
if you got wanted to get really creative and make this an almost training thing, all you'd need to do is just, you know, build a little fucking set and just, you know, get your switches set up to emulate, you know, or whatever for the keys, you know, just, you know, if you pull the lever forward, you know, it hits the, you know, mouse key or whatever, up key, down the key, you know, shit like that, shit like that. You could make a little, like, physical simulator out of this thing, too. Get a couple little tweaks to make it a little more accurate. Like, buttering up the pallets a little bit. <coughs> Alright. Alright, can't forget this one. Today's task is a cargo switch operator. Focus on transferring the goods from one trailer to another, ensuring all items are accounted for and properly secured. Like I said, ain't my fucking job to secure your cargo, asshole. Let's keep everything organized and documented. level's like a boss level. It's like the biggest pallet, the biggest crate you've ever seen. And it just comes rolling towards you. Oh, we could spin this. Slightly off center, that's not right. But if that's where you want it, buddy, that is your loot. <clears throat> Bonk free. Man, I can't wait to smoke this ass. I'm gonna be so fucking high to go to sleep. God, it's gonna be nice. Holy like shit. This fucking peak season marks peak season marks go to kind of blows, but Getting shit done. Oh, 
I really put that at a bad angle. <laughs> it's a re-pick it. Big picture. Clean them as a mess to clean. Whoa, hold on, there's a mess to clean. Let's get the mess plate. Oh, yeah. There's that ghosty door shit going on again. Alright, let's see. Where does that leave us in the... 8, 9, oh, 8, 9, and 10. Okay. Well, I guess if we bring this back, which, um... Seems like people are enjoying it, so that's neat. <clears throat> Let me uh, go big head here. All right. Well, fuck it. Since uh, you're all still here, let's do a couple of thermo woofles, why don't we? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> cheers for hanging out. Let's uh, let's woofle it up. <laughs> Bonus. Uh, is that thermal cam? Yeah, the thermal cam is a little glitchy, but that's all right. Maybe a big burst of flame will calibrate it. And if you're new here, the ceiling has been treated with fireproofing. The green screen has not, which is why these are slightly smaller than usual but the flames aren't getting anywhere near the green screen. Whee. And one more. That was a pretty good one. That one I went a slightly a little bigger. that a second what is that 32 degrees yeah that's that's a much like if you put your hand on the, the acoustic tiles like you barely feel the warmth uh, water water brown water Ooh. hurts when you pee not not this time it burns when I pee does not burn today when I pee. Ah, it doesn't burn. Oh yeah, I had the music going in the background of the woofle. <clears throat> Here, I think, uh... Right, hold on, let me click that, Jesus. Let's, uh, where is it? Here we go. There we go. I don't know what songs are what, but, like, there are the credits just in case, uh anybody's paying attention like it is not bad little fucking jam music you know what i mean <clears throat> but you know that's that whole credit where credit is due like throw this up there see what's up i don't think there's video game credits but at least we can give the uh the music artists since we've been using them for our jam sessions Oh yeah, let me uh it's it's just past 420 somewhere, so let me uh, go ahead and hit this vape up and then uh oh hold on. <laughs> that way everybody can get the credits. <sighs> Cr 
Rig Matthews is going to bed. Got a meeting tomorrow. I'll see you with Clive tomorrow. Yes. Have a good sleep, Craig Matthews. Shoom. <sighs> that was a good puff. All right. What clip do you have on the water bottle? Oh, um, this is just a g generic car. Uh, car oh yeah. Hold on. <laughs> uh, buttons. Buttons. Why is that being weird? Buttons. It's just a carabiner. It's like a generic one. Like this thing's probably 10 years old. The carabiner, not the bottle. Just for clipping on. I'm used to when I was a uh, when I was doing steel rigging. We always had water bottles clipped to our harness as we're doing our thing. I'll just leave the Burma key off. Don't matter now. Um, so I'm used to having. Uh, uh, carabiners on all kinds of shit, like my keys, water bottles, tools, accessories, because I was used to, you know, being up crawling around in uh, trusses and steel supports and all that. And, you know, you got to carry all your tools with you. So you're just clipped in all over the place and everything's, you know, got uh, like uh, paracord, like 550 paracord on it. So if it falls, it, it doesn't go, you know what I mean? Um, so I have carabiners on everything. It would all jangle. Yeah, all my, like when I walk around, I have my keys jingle and all that shit. You must one day retell the jumping story. What, when I fell? Or some other jumping story? <clears throat> I can, I'm definitely, I mean, as, as, you know, viewership grows, I obviously will be retelling some stories. Just so that things don't uh, jump between joists or something. Sounds like from when I fell. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll sort it out. Anyway, I think uh, I think we'll go ahead and then uh, a high scaler steeple deck structure man. Oh, I was a uh, uh, uh. I built theaters, like acting type theaters. I installed all the rigging. We did some of the structural work, installed all the T-tracking and all the guides for the counterweights. Um, yeah, our theaters, you know, we'd load in anywhere between 40 to 90,000 pounds of steel weights up on the catwalks and put them on arbors. And like we installed all the shit that, that like the pipes and the curtains and the lights and all the shit on stage uh, hang from when they come in and out. And then we'd go back after the building was done and actually hang most of the drapery as well. We also did soundproofing in the back of the house. Uh, we'd finish the proscenium openings, install the fire curtains and the fire uh, suppression systems in the actual theater loft area. Shit like that. It was fun. That's where I learned to do rappelling. Um, the first time I ever rappelled, I was was from an 80 foot hole in the floor, and it wasn't like against the wall. It was just a free fall rappel. Uh, they had a guy on the bottom on the rope to pull it because I was using a figure eight. And if if you've never rappelled before, as long as you properly thread your figure eight, if the rope goes to the ground, if you have someone there, if you panic and let go, or you panic and grab the rope in front of you, which is the worst thing you can do when rappelling. But if you do that, the person on the bottom can just pull down on the rope and it will lock you and then they can actually bring you down with tension. Um, just food for thought, that's how I did it the first time. Uh, Chris was up top, my boss at the time, Eric, was on the bottom, and I just stepped out, And but I was able to control it the whole way. You know, one hand in front, one hand in back. Um, but it's, it was fucking fun. Like, and that's coming from someone that I used to be afraid to walk up ladders. And then, like, I'm repelling now, I could give a shit about heights. Still respect them, just don't really worry about them too much, I guess. <clears throat> What do you call a device for lifting pigs? A pork lift. Nice. Nice. 
Uh, wouldn't that be more like some kind of rotisserie? Oh, I guess it depends on what factory you're at and how much heat is available once the pork lift is engaged. Uh, but I think we'll go ahead and call that a stream. It's been almost four hours. How? We played this game for almost four hours? Holy shit. I figured we'd get two hours at it at most. But I guess it is one of those, like I was saying before, it's like video game ASMR kind of thing. Just a relaxing ass chill fucking thing. What? Thank you for stopping by. And if you're new here, feel free to subscribe. And I do streams on Saturday nights at 530 Eastern. So like one hour later than what today started. And we do sit around and bullshit through technical talk and just hang out. It's live after Clive. So appreciate everyone hanging out. Cheers to you all. And I will see you. I'll talk to some of you tomorrow, uh, and I'll see uh, the rest of you on Saturday, I suppose. So I am out in five, four, three, two, one.